they are three, four story buildings that collapsed. They haven't even touched yet. The president said they would need a thousand high capacity trucks working 24 hours a day, seven days a week to remove those wobbles within three years. So it's going to take a long, long time. As human beings, they deserve a better existence than this. They didn't bring the earthquake on themselves. It was an act of nature. And as such, all of us who live better lives should help these people. As the Jewish community would say, to kun olam, to repair the world. This is a country that needs assistance. We have a window of opportunity. If we sit at home now, the reality in 10 years' time may be horrific. This is the time to do it, now, within the first several years after the earthquake, not later. CBS presents Haiti, Religion's Response to Disaster. The narrator is Rollin Smith. For decades, this poverty-stricken nation has been plagued by government corruption, civil unrest, and natural disasters. Adding to the country's woes, a catastrophic earthquake in January that was called biblical in scale. It's estimated that 300,000 people were killed and another 200,000 injured. Many of those injured now live with permanent disabilities. The recent reports of cholera is a devastating setback to a country struggling to recover. Since that fateful day in January, it doesn't look like much has changed within the capital of Port-au-Prince. Most of the city is still in ruins. It's a very difficult situation, more difficult than we faced any place else in the world we operated. Even the tsunami in South Asia was a better situation. I met with a representative of the U.S. Embassy when I was there, and she said to me that before the earthquake, only 40% of the garbage in the city was picked up. And now after the earthquake, none of the garbage in the city is picked up. And the situation five and six months after the earthquake, and now we're a year, was almost like the days of the earthquake. Since the devastating earthquake in Haiti in January, faith groups from around the world are doing what they can to help the country recover. The Jewish Joint Distribution Committee, or JDC, has provided clean water, shelter, and medical aid to thousands of displaced Haitians. But one of their most successful endeavors is renovating and updating the rehabilitation unit at Haiti's University Hospital. What we discovered was there were no facilities to create modern prosthesis. There were no facilities to help people do physical rehabilitation, to use the prosthesis. And even there were no facilities to repair wheelchairs or walkers or crutches. And uh, given that, unfortunately, our Israeli colleagues have lots of experience in these issues, we created a partnership. We brought in some Americans, we brought in some Israelis, we partnered with the largest government hospital in Port-au-Prince. When we arrived in General Hospital, it was in dire straits. The first place that I looked was the rehab uh, unit to see what was happening there, and what we saw were long lines with no staff. You have to be careful, because we're not coming in to take over a rehab unit. We're coming to make that rehab unit sustainable long after we're gone. For JDC, providing expert medical teams in Haiti is one small way to repay the help that they received during the Holocaust. In the 1930s, Haiti opened its doors and offered sanctuary to Jewish refugees from Central Europe. That program more or less ended uh, once the war was over. And actually, most of the Jews we brought in both sides emigrated either to the United States or to Latin America. So now the whole Jewish community in Haiti today is about three. It is estimated that 4,000 people are now living with physical disabilities as a result of the earthquake. What can we do to help the legless and armless? And the answer is we're going to bring in the best doctors from Israel to help give these people a second opportunity to walk. So when a certain doctor would look at an amputee and say they will never walk again and this mother will never embrace her child again, the Israeli doctor walks in and says, four to six weeks, they'll be up on their feet again. 
With the help of the Haitian Red Cross, the Israeli Red Cross, and Yeshiva Medical Center in Israel, JDC is able to provide expert medical care for earthquake victims. The lines continue at the hospital, but now it is fully staffed. Six rehab techs, rotating doctors from Israel, and an ongoing training session for local staff in that hospital. There was also a clinic for those newly fitted with prosthesis. They have allowed JDC to inaugurate a fully functional A to Z self-contained rehab process that begins with preparation of the limb, fitting of the prosthetic, and full rehab until these amputees go from wheelchair, crutches, one crutch, fully independent, walking, playing soccer, dancing, doing what they were doing before the earthquake when they thought that they could never do that again. Oscar is 23 years old, studying economics, and was on the second story of a five-story building when the earthquake hit. He made a run for the stairwell, and it collapsed. Um, ran back to the other side of the classroom, and as he did that, this, the uh, floor caved in, and the whole structure pancaked. He was left on the external wall, standing on a type of balcony, and he jumped off that balcony and survived the fall. And when he stood up, he realized that all 54 of his classmates were under the rubble. Most had been crushed to death. And it was at that moment that a supporting pillar fell on uh, Oscar's leg. And there he remained until the following morning. So by the time his father was able to rescue him, his leg needed to be amputated. Oscar's dream was to follow in the footsteps of Bill Gates, to use wealth to impact positive change in the world. And he had a lot of time to think about what this was going to mean because he had about 12 hours underneath the rubble. And he already decided, I'm going to be a data processor. I will sit now at a desk so no one sees that I'm missing a leg. And I really don't need to dream anymore because that's gone. Handicapped in Haiti, not ideal. And he came to the hospital, extremely depressed, 23-year-old, hobbling in to the rehab unit. And I happened to be there. Spoke with Oscar, I learned that he was on the national soccer team of Haiti only a year before, had played in the championships, and now uh, was sure that no matter what we tell him, he will never be able to walk again. So we proved him wrong. His recuperation was nothing short of heroic. The doctors in Israel and Haiti had never seen anything like Oscar before. Someone that went from hopelessness to hopefulness in a matter of two days. Today he's back playing soccer. The fitting process for the prosthetic as well as the rehab is very challenging. And that's what's so magnificent about him. 